Jesus. Oh, there's a wind a blowing. Hallelujah. Oh, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up now. Oh, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. A covenant is an agreement. Okay? Agreement between people or parties, but at least two people or two parties together. They come and say, if you do this, I will do that. If you don't do this, I will not do that. All right? In Genesis chapter 14, Jesus Christ in, in the form of Melchizedek appeared unto Abraham, brought bread and wine which is the element of the table of the Lord which is the gospel of Jesus Christ which the Bible calls the New Testament yeah. is that right? I mean Jesus said in Matthew 26 and in Luke 22 this is the New Testament in my blood he took bread, broke it and said this is my body broken for you Amen. then he took wine and he said this is the New yeah. Testament Amen. in my blood so bread and wine is the gospel is equal the New Testament. Now in Genesis 14, Melchizedek appeared unto Abraham, brought bread and wine. And in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8, the Bible says the gospel, the gospel was first preached. You've got to hear this. Was first preached to Abraham. Okay? Not to us. The gospel was first preached to Abraham. So Jesus Christ appeared to Abraham, bread and wine, and he said to him, Abraham, there's going to come a time in the future when I'm going to come in flesh form, lay down my life for the sin of the world. And the Bible declares in Romans, in Galatians, and in Hebrews that the gospel was preached to Abraham about a savior that was to come. And when Abraham had to offer his only son, Isaac, we always see Isaac had to be offered. Isaac had to be offered. And how Abraham put his trust in he's going to have Isaac, he's going to have Isaac. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he trusted in God that the promise would come to his seed. Yeah. And the Bible declares, not speaking of seeds as unto many, but as one seed, and that is Christ Jesus. So the promises made to Abraham was not made to Isaac, it was made to Jesus Christ. You see? So the gospel was first preached to Abraham. Abraham received the bread and wine, gave a tithing of all the spoils to Melchizedek. Then the Bible comes in Genesis 17. Genesis 17. And God says, Abraham, I will make a covenant. I will make a covenant with you and then the Bible says and for 400 years your descendants will live as slaves in this country Egypt then they will come back to this country Canaan but then when they leave there this covenant will take effect so the covenant only took effect when God gave the law to Moses. Yeah. So the Bible says without the law, the covenant did not exist. So the Bible now goes on to say, does the law make the promises to Abraham of none effect? Yeah. The Bible says no. The law or the covenant, depends on which Bible you read, the covenant was only added till the seed should come, which is 
Christ Jesus. So the covenant was for the Jewish people. From the time they left Egypt to the time that Jesus died on the cross and said, it is finished. When Jesus said it is finished, he finished the covenant. And he reestablished the testament. Now for a covenant, you've got to work. If you don't do your portion, you don't get your share. But on a testament, you just go to the lawyer and get the goods. Come on, somebody, get excited. So we're not in covenant with God. Jesus left us a testament. He paid the full price, shed his blood, and said, now you can just come and receive freely. You don't have to work for it. 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 It's by grace and by grace alone. In Daniel chapter 9, uh -huh. uh -huh. you've got to read it. The Bible says, I, Daniel, remember he had the same vision that John had on the Isle of Patmos. He heard a voice behind him like a voice of many waters. When he turned around, he saw the same vision that John saw on the Isle of Patmos, the Son of God with hair white like snow and white like wool, with eyes like a flaming fire, with a golden girdle, with feet as bronze burning in the fire. He saw the same vision. And he saw, and I saw one. And then he calls him. He said, like the Son of Man walking. In. And then he said, and I saw him, the Ancient of Days. Right. And the Bible says, and he broke the covenant with Israel after three and a half years. Jesus rose to ministry at the age of 30 when John baptized him. He came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove and, and, and John said, I, I, I saw the Spirit descending on him, stayed on him and he who said to me, baptized, said, if you see the Spirit abiding in him, it's he that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. And Jesus declared, the Spirit of the Lord God is now upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Amen. And Jesus ministered for three and a half years. Three and a half years later, they crucified him on a cross, and he said, it is finished. And he broke the covenant. And he turned around, and John saw him on the Isle of Patmos. And he says, the spirit and the bride says, come. And let him who are thirsty come. So the covenant finished when Jesus said it is finished. Now, we've got it. Deuteronomy 28. Peter, read, bro. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice okay, of the Lord. Okay, it shall come to pass, if... Right. Thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice oh, of the Lord. If you shall hearken, if you shall hear, if you shall listen, if you shall obey. Right. To observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come okay. on thee. All these blessings. Okay shall come on thee and overtake thee. Hey, yes, shall even overtake you. Man, I mean, we've heard this scripture over and over. These blessings shall come and overtake you. Show me. Okay, go. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of okay, the Lord if, thy God. Oh, my goodness. If, okay. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kin and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. And he hath sworn unto thee, 
if thou shalt keep well, the commandment. I forgot to put in if. There's, an, and there's another one. If. Okay. If you shall keep the commandment. Okay. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord sway unto the fathers, unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open upon thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that oh happen, oh, oh, I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. But we don't really see it in the fashion we'd like to see it, because we forget to look at all the ifs, man. If that thou hearken unto no, the No, I don't believe in if. What I say? <laughs> Anymore. If thou... Oh, if! <laughs> Hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods or to serve them. I hope you, you, you hear how many times he reads if, and how many times he reads commands. So we love you. Oh, I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed who, blessed in the morning, blessed in the evening. I'm blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm blessed. Is it just a good thing? Or do we need to enter into the blessings where it says it shall overtake you? I mean, I mean, it's good to say it, but it's better to have the proof, man. It's good to say I'm healed. It's good to confess I'm healed, but it's a total different thing to be healed. It's good to keep on confessing I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. But it's better to be healed. Okay, go on, Peter. Don't give. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken. Okay, but now it shall come to pass again. If you shall not if you shall do the commandments you shall be blessed if you shall not do the commandments to observe to do all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day the rest of the scripture says you'll be cursed in the city cursed in the field cursed coming in cursed going out and then he goes on to say and even the sicknesses is not mentioned in this book shall come upon you if you do not hearken and if you do not keep the commandments of your Lord your God to do them this day. So we see the blessings are conditional and the curses are conditional. So there's no blessings. There's no blessings in Deuteronomy 28. It's all conditional blessings if you do the commandments. So you've got to keep the law, booty. And if the whole house of Israel couldn't keep it for hundreds and thousands of years, who are you? Yeah. To be the only one that's going to keep the law. But Genesis 14 says the following. Listen to this. It says, Abraham, blessed, blessed is Abraham from God Most High. And blessed shall you be above all nations. And blessed is everybody that blesses you. And God doesn't mention a curse. Because he brought bread and wine. Preached the gospel to him. Mentioned the fact that he's going to die one day on the cross. This is going to be my body. This is going to be my blood. And the Bible says, Abraham believed. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Come on somebody. For years and years. I couldn't understand how could Abel, Abraham be called righteous and how can we have the faith of Abraham because Abraham did not add a covenant. The covenant was added and only sealed when God gave Moses the law. 
But in Genesis 17, he says, Abraham, I will make a covenant. But it will only be in effect 400 years from now. And then the people that do not do my commandments. And then, Abraham, if you walk perfectly in my sight, you shall be blessed. All of a sudden, it changes from blessed to if. Okay, turn your Bibles quickly to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, you poor, silly, thoughtless, unreflecting, senseless Galatians. Who has fascinated or bewitched or cast a spell on you unto whom right before your very eyes Jesus Christ the Messiah was openly and graphically set forth as portrayed as crucified? Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as a result of obeying the law, doing its works, or was it by hearing the gospel? Was it from observing a law of rituals or from a message of faith? Are you so foolish? Are you so senseless and silly? Having begun your new spiritual spirituality with the Holy Spirit, are you now reaching perfection by depending on the flesh, which is the law? Verse 5. Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you, do so on the grounds of you're doing what the law demands or because of your believing in and adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you heard. Thus Abraham believed and it was counted a credit to him for righteousness. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify and make righteous, put in right standing with himself the Gentiles in consequence of faith, proclaimed the gospel, foretelling the glad tidings of a Savior long beforehand to Abraham in the promise saying, you shall all the nations be blessed. Okay, can we just get that verse 5 in the Amplified Peter, please? Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous... Okay. he who supplies. He who supplies you with, with his marvelous... Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Listen to this. This is so profound. I just saw it now. He who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully Listen. and works powerfully and miraculously and miraculously among you do so on the grounds of your doing. Okay. The power, the miracles, the works of Christ, is it because of you doing what the law demands the law or on your believing in and adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you heard yeah. or on faith yeah. Yeah. and that is not just faith that is believing faith right and for those who do not understand the difference there is a tape at the back believing faith it's a total difference Believing is to carry the faith through. Faith is that initial contact. Believing is carrying it through. Abraham believed. And the believing was counted as righteousness. Okay? Now listen to this. I think this is, this is going to be it. He who supplies you with the Holy Spirit, he who works powerfully, who works miraculously, is it because you're doing the law? Come on, church, I want to ask you tonight, when it comes to miracles, when it comes to healing, and people are not healed, then they start asking questions. Why? What must I do? What can I still do? What must I do? What can I still do? Because I've done everything I can. What can I still do? Nothing. You couldn't do nothing in the beginning. You, couldn't, you can't do nothing now. Why is it when the stress starts getting harder and the breakthrough doesn't come, all of a sudden, what must I do? What must I do? Oh, and what you're actually saying is, I'm stupid, I'm senseless, I'm unreflecting, I'm silly. I forgot what Christ looked like on the cross. I mean, if our lives must be opened up tonight, how many of us would earn God's grace, God's mercy, God's blessings? How many of us, if you are sick, can earn that healing from Almighty God? 
No. So, but, 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 but we still try and do it. We still say, what must I do? What must I do? Just one, one or two scriptures more. Listen to this. Verse 11 says, It is evident that no person is justified. No person yeah. is justified. Yeah. Yeah. No person is made righteous. No person is brought into right standing with God through the law. No person. But listen to verse 13. Listen to verse 13. Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse, the doom of the law, and its condemnation by himself, becoming a curse for us, for it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, to the end that through their receiving Christ Jesus, the blessing promised to Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us so that the blessings no he doesn't mention the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 he says that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles Deuteronomy 28 has got nothing to do with you you don't go for those blessings blessed in the city, blessed in the field blessed. that is law that is if you do the commandments that is a legalistic bondage. That is an agreement that you've got to pay your duties. So what have we missed? We've been trying to get the blessings of Moses and not the blessings of Abraham. We've been trying to get the blessings if I do, if I do, if I do. It's not that curse that is taken away. He's taken the curse of the law away, not the curse if you do not. He's not taking, he didn't take away if you shall not obey the law you shall be cursed. He took the curse of the law. He took the curse of the law. See, we forget the things that God is saying. And we missed one little word. And the Bible says as long as they read Moses, there's a veil over their faces so that they cannot see. It's not by reading the law. We all read the law. Yeah. We did. Oh, blessed in the city, blessed in the field. But you forgot if. Blessed coming in, blessed coming. Forgot if. That's, that's not a blessing, man. That's a curse. Because nobody could stay, stand the gift. The ifs. I mean, no, I don't. Believe an if anymore. <laughs> Acts chapter 3. Now Peter and John went, went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked of them alms? Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, which John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, suspecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Amen. Leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people see him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat at their arms, sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened. What were they filled with? Wonder and amazement. About what? About the powerful miracle. Amen. Listen, I'm going to close this message. He who supplies us with the Holy Spirit and works powerfully yeah. and miraculously amongst us, does he do it because of our doing the law? Or does he do it because we got faith and believe in him now when Peter and John raised up that man the people were filled with wonder they were filled with amazement and as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John so he was not totally strong yet all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering now they're not only wondering now they're greatly wondering And when Peter saw it, he answered, Ye men of Israel, 
Why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or our holiness we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham. Yeah. Yeah. I just want you to listen yeah. to that emphasis there. Has glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was de determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murder to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are all witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. Yes, amen. And gave him perfect soundness yes. in the presence of you all. Hallelujah. If you want to do yourself a favor, go and read Romans 4. After tonight, it said, Did Abraham receive the blessings before he was circumcised? Or did he receive the blessings after? Before, so that it might be by grace and not by works. So if any man now works, he gets only, he only get paid for what he's working for. But if it's not by works, it's a free gift. And so we have received a testament. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. What's the extra whipped cream for? <laughs> you know, Hank kept wondering why I went through the whole fridge looking for a really cool bottle. He goes, 